You're listening to Conferences on Line Allergy from Children's Mercy Hospitals and Clinics in Kansas City, Missouri. Today is August 26, 2013, and I'm your host, Dr. Jay Portnoy. Our topic today, cyclic neutropenia. Our presenter is Dr. Autumn Hahn. She's a pediatric resident at Children's Mercy Hospitals and Clinics. Anyway, we're very fortunate this morning to be joined by Dr. Adam Hahn. Dr. Hahn uh, is a uh, pediatric resident. She's been uh, spending the month with us here in, uh, uh, in the allergy section. Uh, and she's agreed to uh, review a topic that uh, she's reviewed on uh, cyclic neutropenia. So welcome to Conferences Online Allergy, Dr. Hahn. Um, here's the keyboard. You can just use the arrows to move forward and backward. And thank you for joining us. So uh, today I'm just going to briefly present uh, cyclic neutropenia. So how do I flip the... There, go ahead. Okay, there we go. So cyclic neutropenia, um, as a broad overview, is a rare hematological disorder. This happens about one to two uh, children per million in the population. Um, this uh, typical disorder is also called cyclic granulocytosis periodic neutropenia, periodic acetosis, um, epithos somatitis, um, perianitis mucosa nicaritica uh, occurrence in disease, or even periodic cyclic um, hematopoiesis. So um, going a little bit all over the history of cyclic neutropenia, it was first identified in 1910 on a boy who was uh, three and a half months old with a recurrent fever, bronchiolosis, and severe neutropenia. And in 1949, they actually identified five families with uh, um, affected symptoms, and that's when they um, identified this disorder as an autosomal dominant um, inherent disorder. Um, and in 1989, they actually treated one of the patients with the GCSS. Uh, therapy which showed good response to that and then that seems to be the main study of the treatment until this time. Um, and, to, and at the same time they also identified this gene mutation called ELA2 or also called ELAINE um, that seems to be strictly related to the cyclineutropenia disorder. In 2001 um, they found the main mechanism of this disease to be the accelerated apoptosis of neutrophil by this ELAINE or ELA2 a two gene mutation, and we're going to go over a little bit more about um, how that is done. So, clinical features: cyclinjupenia is usually a mild and benign disorder. Uh, it presents with the recurrent fevers, mouth ulcers that last usually longer than a week. Um, the mouth ulcer is very painful, and it could also accompany by the cervical lymphadenopathy. Generalized lymphadenopathy in these patients are very rare. Um, and this mouth also, recurrent mouth also, seems to be due to their defective production of the neutrophil, which causes inability of the mobilization of the neutrophil from, uh, <coughs> from, the, from the blood to the affected um, infection sites. Um, they also have infections due to re regular recurrence of very neutropenia, as you might assume, with the pharyngitis, cellulitis, sinusitis, otitis, so mainly upper respiratory tract, bronchitis, and occupertinitis, which initially presents an abdominal guardian and ileus, and then this is the main um, infection that could eventually lead to septic shock. Um, and bacteremia seems to be mainly due to recurring uh, chronic clonic mucosal um, ulceration. Um, the cyclinjupenia is often found in a child less than one year of age, and they seem to recur every 21-day periodicity, even though they could also recur within 14-day period or even up to 40 days period. Hematological feature of cyclinjupenia is mainly the oscillation of the neutrophil and monocytes within 21-day um, periodicity. The, if you study the neutrophil counts um, in these patients, the SL neutrophil count, they'll show less than 200 microliter for about three to five days, which is, by definition, um, severe neutropenia. As you all might know, the mild neutropenia is from 1,000 to 1,500, and moderate is from 500 to 1,000, and severe neutropenia is less than 500. And after the three to five day period of the absolute um, severe neutropenia, it will, the patients will return back to lower limit of the normal, about 2,000 per microliter until the next period of the neutropenia. 
So this is a nice diagram that I found in one of the papers um, that I use as a reference. As you can see that they will have almost absolute drop of the neutrophils in every 21 day period and then it'll stay that way for about three to five days. And then it can also coin, uh, uh, coincide with the dropping of the leukocytes and um, reticulocytes. Interestingly, at the time of the neutropenia, they will often have the monocytosis, and then that will be explained later why. Um, so going more into the genetics of cyclineutropenia, this is an auto, autosomal dominant um, disorder, and it has full penetrance. However, the patients will have a varying severity of the clinical manifestation. So when a kid comes in with no family history of cyclineutropenia, it is quite rare that to be a sporadic mutation uh, leading to cyclineutropenia, oftentimes it'll be uh, because the parent or even grandparent of that affected child will have the same kind of disorder, but with very, very mild um, severity in the uh, clinical presentation, so they were never diagnosed. Um, the mutation is found in the chromosome 19 piece of the long arm of the 13.3, um, and this mutation is um, just very localized on the ELA2 gene, or also called Elaine gene, um, that encodes the neutrophil elastase. Neutrophil elastase is a protease uh, produced by the neutrophil that has um, activity against um, some bacteria um, breakdown, uh, wall breakdown. However, um, the neutrophil elastase is found to cause accelerated apoptosis of the neutrophil if they accumulate in large numbers, which seems to be the main driving mechanism for these disease. So that's a, uh, another diagram that I found in these papers. As you can see, um, that, that's the long arm of the chromosome 19. And on the XM4 is where they encode the ELA2 gene, and that seems to be the main site of the mutation on, um, for the cyclineutropenia. They will usually have a gain of function um, type of defect. Interestingly, um, the severe chronic neutropenia, which is also very um, similar to this disease, except the fact that they're always there instead of, instead of like cyclic neutropenia that happens over periods. Um, and that mutation is encoded and right on the excellent phi, so you can kind of assume the strong um, correlation between those two diseases. The pathophysiology. So Previous studies have been mainly driven by studying the bone marrow. The bone marrow of these patients are usually found to be hypocellular, and then they um, will do the bone marrow aspiration every five days for several weeks to see uh, what are the changes that um, occur in these patients. Um, and most of the times, they will see um, Myelocyte, myeloblast uh, differentiation, but that will drop every 21 days, and then that will almost have no neutrophil production during those times. Um, so those previous studies suggested that cyclic neutropenia actually occurs to regular reoccurring reinterruption of the um, cell production in these cells. And uh, 2001, uh, in 2001, they actually did a study with the flow cytometric analysis of these cells that shows increased number of the NX and B um, staining cells, which indicates a selective apoptosis of death of neutrophil precursors uh, with their removal by the me uh, marrow macrophages, so they will like stain uh, bright in these um, macrophages. And, um, so that suggests that neutrophils with these affected um, patients will have accelerated apoptotic death um, going into neutropenia. Then you might ask, why don't they have these symptoms chronically every day if they're causing accelerated apoptotic death uh, rather than occurring every 21 days? And this diagram nicely demonstrates uh, the reason for the periodicity that's uh, main suggested theory at this time. So they will have a normal myeloblast differentiation initially, and the neutrophils will produce those defective um, neutrophil elastase. Uh, with the accumulation of defective neutrophil elastase will actually in turn cause the inhibition of the myeloblast differentiation of the following cell line. So at that time, you'll have about three to five days of defective um, differentiation or even absent of the differentiation leading to a period of the, of the neutropenia. After that, since there's no neutrophil, uh, no neutrophil produced during that time, there's also no defective neutrophil elastase um, accumulating. And with that, they will have normal uh, uh, 
resuming of the myeloblast differentiation, uh, leading to the cycle of neutropenia. Um, so dinosocycline neutropenia is mainly made by documentation of an acyl neutrophil count less than 200 microliter for at least three to five days, and then uh, by the three to five days, consecutive days, recurring every um, every month for about three months at least. However, this requires uh, strict monitoring of this patient, and considering the fact that this is quite a benign and mild disease, this is not very efficient in diagnosing um, these patients with cycline neutropenia. So another thing that you can do is you can test for the Lane gene mutation. Um, and this is only in, if the index of suspicion is high with uh, recurring mouth ulcers, recurrent fever, and recurrent um, signs of neutropenia. This test is actually quite good. It's positive in about 90 to 100 percent of the patient with a cyclic neutropenia, so it has a good sensitivity as well as specificity. Um, and when you're diagnosing a patient with a cyclic neutropenia, you should consider other differential diagnosis like the chronic benign neutropenia, which it presents in a uh, similar way, but this is more of a continuous problem rather than being a period. Or other periodic fever syndromes like familiar Mediterranean fever syndrome, um, hyper IgG, um, and tumor necrosis specter, um, period fever syndromes. Um, those will have these recurrent fevers, but they will not have this period neutropenia. Um, Schwanzman syndrome will accompany by the pancreatic symptoms and some bone um, problems with the delayed growth. Um, so when you have those patients with uh, that, then you should consider Schwarzman syndrome. Um, Lymphoproliferative disorder of granular lymphocytes is another um, differential diagnosis, as well as other type of primary immune deficiency. So the prognosis of the cyclic neutropenia is actually really good. Um, they have a normal growth and development usually, and the cycling of the neutropenia will decrease over time, and some patients will even go into remission after 30 uh, years of age. There is no congenital abnormality or malignancy associated that you should be concerned about. Um, the main, uh, main um, complication of this disease uh, that um, everyone uh, that is well known as the accelerated dental decay, and this is due to the recurrent mouth ulcers and in gingivitis. Um, the other thing is the female who are affected with uh, disease will have increased risk of spontaneous abortion. Interestingly, there is no reported cases of um, decrease in male fertility. Uh, sepsis and death due to bacteria is quite uncommon, but uh, the one that people should be worried about is their lifestyle impact on their work and social and psychological status because they'll have this recurrent infection causing them to miss work and school oftentimes. So the main treatment, um, so the, going into the treatment of the cyclotropenia, in the past they tried um, splenectomy, they tried androgen, they tried lithium, and they also tried uh, glucocorticoid uh, steroids. Um, all of them didn't show any um, effects on these patients. And in, two, in I believe, um, 1989, they tried the recombinant human GCSF, about two to five micrograms per kilograms per day. This is done by sub-Q routes. Uh, and this showed increase in the amplitude of the neutrophil as well as it shortens the duration of the neutropenia. It also changes the cycle length from about 21 days to 14 days, and they also reduce all these symptoms of the recurrent infection. They also tried the GMCSF, and that showed pretty much the same effect, except that it failed to increase the amplitude of the neutrophil. So those patients continue to have neutropenia, even though the cycle and the duration was uh, were shortened. Um, so the treatment with the GCSF seems to be the most effective um, method of treatment. The patients are usually treated for about 3 to 15 days, um, and you can also give them antibiotics with the recurrent infections, and periodized enteral bacterial mouthwash seems to be effective for treating gingivitis. Complications um, with this treatment is mainly the mild bone pain and headache. This, uh, these complications, uh, these side effects, seem to be mainly correlated with the dosage. So increasing dosage, they'll have more problems. So it is actually recommended that you start with a low dose, about one microgram per kilogram per day initially, and then gradually increase the dose as uh, 
<clears throat> with the time to decrease this type of side effect. The osteoporosis seems to be the main um, significant complication with this treatment, and it is recommended that one should monitor the bone density as well as the 25 um, hydrolyzed uh, vitamin D and treat it accordingly. Um, other serious complications include splenomegaly. However, usually the increasing size is quite modest and doesn't seem to have actual clinical, uh, clinical complication. Um, I think that pretty much sums up my pre presentation on the cyclineutropenia, and those are my references. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. I don't have any specific questions for you because I don't know much about cyclic <laughs> But I will um, compliment your presentation that you did a wonderful job of um, not putting everything that you were going to say on slides, which is wonderful, and your first year of residency that's way ahead of most of your peers. That's fantastic. Very comprehensive. So thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. This has been an ACAAI production. To learn more about conferences on line allergy or the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, go to acaai.org. See you next time. <laughs>